everybody. I am Cinnamon Cooney, your art Sherpa, and today I'd love to show you how you can paint this gorgeous, colorful catamaran near the shore with little foaming waves and beach foam, all kinds of techniques. We're going to cover the cloud techniques, the water techniques, the foam on the beach techniques, how to paint the boat, everything that you need to know explained step by step, every technique broken down and explained, every color mix explained. On the mic is my husband, John. I'm going to talk about boats. He's going to talk about boats the whole time. I'm going to just say right now, <laughs> I love boat people. <laughs> and uh, if you want too. his direct email, you just let me know. <laughs> no, um, we're going to go over the colors and everything during the video. But if you're really new to painting and you would like some extra assistance, if you check the description below and you open up the more, there's actually a big long description. It really only shows you a couple lines, but there's a little downward arrow. If you open it up, it's going to give you a link to my website, theartsherpa.com. It gives you a direct link to a video page. And on the video page is the reference painting. So you can uh, print that out and look at that or have that on a second device. There is a grid so that you can get a sense of where the object is. If you're not ready to draw, there's a free traceable. Hmm. And there's a link to a mini book where all the steps of this project are written out, including what tool I use during what step what color mixes I had going on, what steps. You don't get lost in all those details because I know you can paint and I know you can do this. I think what really throws beginners is just, it's a lot of information to take in at once. You're very smart. You're very capable. You can do this. You just need to know what's going on and when it's going on. Yeah. If you think this sounds cool, hit the subscribe button because we do this for free all week, every week. Also, if you... Came here just because you thought it was a cool thumbnail. Welcome. Or if you're here as part of our 30-day painting program, Acrylic April, this is going to be a really fun day for you guys. Hopefully by now, all of those aquatic skills have interlocked into different skill sets that have built up on each other. So you're really ready for this boat painting. If you've really done it, I know this has been an ambitious year. So remember, if a project feels big or you're feeling like this is a lot, just break it up into several days. Remember, it's okay. If uh, acrylic April goes into May, that's totally fine. Get your paint, get your brushes, come back and meet me at the easel right now. I'm really, really going to show you how you can paint this. For today's wonderful, relaxing, smooth sailing project, I have an eight by eight canvas. On it, I have a wish or intention for you is that you have smooth sailing during not only this painting process, but if you've chosen to do the full course on painting water, and that that's smooth sailing. So if you're here for just this one, which is fantastic. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Or if you come in for all of acrylic April, I hope it's going well for you. I have these acrylic colors, ultramarine blue, phthalo blue, Mars black, burnt sienna, cadmium yellow medium, cadmium red medium, phthalo green, and titanium white. I'm going to use an assortment of acrylic brushes. Information is in the description below and also on the website with the link to the video page. But again, I cannot recommend to you enough that you go check out those extra resources because they do make your painting experience much easier, don't they, John? They do. Important tip, if you're going to use the mini book, remember, you don't actually have to print it out. It's a digital resource. You could just use it digitally, right, if you're low yep. on ink. That would be an okay thing to do. And yeah. the other thing is, is that if I have turned the canvas and you're having a little trouble orienting, you can use the mini book step that matches the step that we're on, orient by my hand really easily. And then now you have a close-up view of the technique, even if it's in an angle, but you know where we are on the canvas. So those are a couple of tips to make that uh, a little easier and, and more fun for everybody, I think. Yeah. As we go. These are cool resources. I'm really into it. I like how this is going actually just overall. Okay, I think there's nothing to do but step one. So in this step, we're going to put a solid color all over the entire canvas. I'm going to take a number 26 bright. A bright is a square brush. This particular one has a firmer filament in it that's ideal for heavy body paint. I'm going to take a little bit of my ultramarine blue and my phthalo blue and mix them together in even amounts. And then I'm going to add some white into that. And this is sort of like a nice way to get that mid-tone sky. Mm. That's so great on a beachy day. And I'm going to just brush back and forth, creating a 
solid color through the whole canvas. Now, I will be a little neater with this one than I usually am. Yeah. Because I want to have a nice sky to start with. Does that so mean you're going to make it more uniform or? I think what I'll do is I will get one layer on and then actually do a second layer. So it's less brushy? So it's less brushy. I'll get it on initially at first. But because we're doing such a bright, clear day, I'm going to want this guy to be a little bit better. So I'm going to take the hair dryer, dry everything, and then do almost exactly the same thing again. So I'm going to add another layer of blue on here. The double layer is going to give us a nice, clear, bright sky. I'm going to continue to add the blues to my white. And I'm going to bring this up here. It's a little bit lighter, so I'll get some more pigment in it. We have a lot of sea color going on, and it will be so different that this double layering of color is going to give us a very rich and finished resolve to the painting. Resolution. You can see that's just a bluer sky, and it's not as brushy, mm -hmm. and I can kind of blend that out a lot easier going back and forth. I am holding my canvas a little bit at an angle to help uh, my brushwork be a little more level because that's the strength of my hand that direction you may have a different strength and what I mean by that is you will have a directionality or hand that's more dominant and that you feel more confident in you can always move your canvas to be more comfortable with that and that's important whether you're right-handed or left-handed to remember that there isn't like a right way to paint a surface right or left-handed, but it is, there is a right way for you and to always be moving your canvas, your surface and your tools for your comfort and for your benefit. Not just because your teacher did it exactly that way. It's important for you guys as a student to be aware that you might want to do this in a slightly different way for your own mm -hmm. comfort. Now this is step one. We're going to move on to step two where I'm going to show you how to sort of uh, loosely sketch this in. Take a deep breath and let it out. I hope you're doing okay. We're going to start laying out the composition of our painting. Are you doing all right today, John? I'm doing good. Excellent. I'm so glad when we're all feeling good and everything is going okay. I'm going to take two very important tools for this project. I'm going to take a T-square, which is a measurement tool that allows me to draw very straight lines, and a chalk pencil, which is a tool that allows me to draw on the surface without making permanent marks that I can't erase. But we're regular old chalk would work too huh regular old chalk would work from a chalkboard yeah. would work perfectly i'm going to measure from the top down to about five and a half inches maybe just a smidge above that but it really is actually uh quite narrow for the whole surface All right and that is everything below this line is my water and everything above that line is my sky now i'm going to come over from the top oh i'm going to say down from my ruler a little bit, uh, maybe even like in an inch and a half down, I'm going to come here at two and a half and then maybe closer to two. I'm going to make a little line from the bottom. I'm going to measure up also about mm, maybe an inch and a quarter. And this kind of lets me know how much space in my composition, my book, my boat is going to take up mm -hmm. now. If this is challenging to freehand like this, guess what? What? We have two extra tools for you. We have a traceable, which you can use to transfer on the canvas. And we also have a gridding tool, which you can use to create a grid and transfer on the canvas. And there are instructions in the mini book for both of those processes. So if you want to use either one of those, that is completely okay. I just want to kind of know like how big my boat is, you know, mm. relative to everything that is going on. Like, I've got a hull here. How far would the hull go back? Well, I would say that the hull maybe is just about like this far in and let's just say to four inches. So it's, that's how big it is, right? Just kind of put that in. We have two hulls because it's a catamaran. Mm. I like catamarans. My family had a catamaran in California when we lived there. Catamaran's the multi-hull 
Yeah, they have they have these like two little kind of pontoon things that go in and these great sails and you can get them on like one hull or the other hull and you can like hang out on the catamaran. And that all seems really cool except my mom was seasick. <laughs> <laughs> and also, I don't know if you've ever noticed this, but sailing is a little bit cold. <laughs> yeah. Well, I guess unless you're in like San Diego or something, maybe in Florida. I don't know. No, well, we were in that. San Diego, so I know you're teasing me. However, it is some of my happiest memories. And one of the things I really loved about catamarans was the colorful sail. Now, the sail is going to come into about here, and it sort of makes a line. It actually, this part of the sail connects, and I'll use my ruler to get, look at my crazy wonky line. I use my ruler to make this work. Mm. Because... The people who engineer sails are much better at it than I am. But you just want to bring it here. The reason it comes into the trapeze area, and that's what they call this, is because that is what holds the sail up. You either move the trapeze or the sail. You want the, the, the sail to be right about in the middle of the trapeze there. Now, there's a forward sail that wires into the front hulls. And then there's a bit of a thing that comes off here that's the rudder that steers the boat. It's a weird mm -hmm. mount that I remember. Like, seriously, I'm remembering from my childhood these, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, that's a trapeze. I remember that. That's really wild that I can remember any of this. This particular sail is going to come out just a little bit, right? And not all the way to the top. What's really wild about these sails, John, I don't know if you've ever gotten to get on a catamaran is that every once in a while, they just switch. Yes, I do do that. <laughs> so everybody's got to be willing to jump to another side of the boat. That's a function of sailing. Yeah, it's really alarming. Take you right off the boat if you're not paying attention. It will indeed. Let's give ourselves a little ball here. That the reason boom swings around, it oh, will take you out. It is not fun, man. Now, I say this as I only have mild, mild sailing experience. And... Um, most of the sailing ships that I'm sort of interested are non-traditional. Well, I can't say that this is a traditional sailing ship. Sure. Yeah. It's like a, a juke would be a non-traditional. Really? That seems like a very traditional sailing ship. Cause like, well, it depends on where you're from. Like if you're this from is the very West, Kevin this Costner is very West. water world here. So this is the Kevin Costner water world <laughs> setup. <laughs> Well, there's a lot of those out here in the... <laughs> Nobody who owns a catamaran was like, yeah, that's a good idea. I was like, I wouldn't want to live on my boat. I mean, it's like a weekend activity. It like kind of holds a cooler. You can float some stuff behind it, but it's not like just fight pirates from. <laughs> mm. That's a different sailing ship that she <laughs> But okay. And then, uh, right. it... Not that I'm mad at them or anything. So I just kind of want to know where these things are. And a trick that I can do here to sort of help me I'm going to paint my sails in white <gasps> with my cat's tongue. So this is a number eight cat's tongue. And I'm going to do this because I want to come back and have very, very bright stripes on my sail. Uh -huh. And also I want to be able to paint clouds and water with long lines. And if this is white, I'll be able to do that with ease. And I'll show you why. Oh, okay. I don't need to worry too much about the hulls as much because those will... Those will stay there. I'll, st I'll still paint them in, but it would be easy to make them blue, right? Yes. But the sails, it can be hard to get a bright color back again. Easy to darken, sometimes hard to lighten. And I'm going to just kind of put in a little bit of white here just to show myself where stuff is so that when I come back, I remember. <laughs> Otherwise, I might just paint it all out. And then where will my boat be? It will be invisible. It will be something. It will be a phantom boat. Phantom boat. It could be Jolly Rogers Catamaran. Jolly Rogers. Camera. It's his vacation craft. Like when Again, he's not is, out to scare this is anyone. Sketchy. He's just, you this know. isn't something. This is not your finished boat. You're just like, all you're doing here is saying, there's a boat here. Don't forget about it. The other thing that I might do while I'm here, and I'll do it with my chalk, actually. 
is that you may want to think about a little bit that there's sort of a shoreline that's happening with some sea foam, a little sea foam shoreline. Because catamarans should not go farther than what they should see the shore. No, they can they can go way out. You can get far in a catamaran. I mean, I don't. You you've got to be able to sail though. Like some people sail really far in a catamaran. Yeah, I think that like if you're skilled at sailing, you could probably sail anything. I'm just reminding myself there'll be waves, but I'll get them in later. We're just giving ourselves kind of a process now. If you're doing the traceable or the grid, this is the stage that you would do that. We're going to call this a step, and we're going to come back and put in some really happy, airy, joyful sky. So now let's come into the sky and we're going to put in some clouds and some atmosphere and some different things to make the sky feel really, really uh, inviting and blue. The kind of day that you're like, I would go sail on that day. I'm going to take a little bit of my phthalo blue and my ultramarine blue and my cat's tongue again. And I'll try to keep this straight because like I know like sometimes people are like, I'm turning my head. It happens. Yeah, I we have a overhead camera, but when your hand's in the way, I go to the side camera so they can see what's going on. No. I'm just adding another little layer of blue. I want this top to have that jets could be flying in it blue. Let's see, last step, I planted a seed. Hmm. What was the seed? Well, see, anytime you take state... ultramarine blue and titanium white, what's the seed? So anytime you state an opinion about a boat, boat people come out. What did I state the opinion on? Well... It doesn't really matter, but once you state something about a boat. Oh, I don't want, I, our boat, pe uh, is that like trains? Is it going to be like yes. trains? Because I'm really yes. afraid of train watchers. Very much like trains. So Man, this, the train community is like, you better get that train right. So, you know. They don't play. Whenever, whenever you even loosely imply something about a boat, someone will have an opinion either supporting or contrary, and sometimes I've both at the same time. I've not seen that. I have felt there's been no weird boat commentary. Really? So I'm doing the ultramarine <laughs> blue and titanium white at the base. This is the top third of the sky here where we've got our horizon line, and I'm doing back and forth strokes. So even though you're seeing this at an angle, don't turn your head to the side. Just know that that's what I'm doing. And then as I go up, I'll get into more of that phthalo blue. Apparently, I got eraser shavings in my paint. That huh. was weird. Sometimes yeah. that happens. I have a feeling that there'll be significant others overhearing our boat conversation. And come in to hear what's going on with the boats. <laughs> and then they'll, they'll tell us the correct thing about the boats that, that I'm sure we are incorrect about. Because that's feel, what you know. I don't feel that incorrect about the boats. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Clearly, Don has some feelings. Now I'm going to no. take a 12 Princeton Select Round Blender. This is a round blender with um, it's they call it camel hair, but I don't want you to panic when you see that on the label. The no camels were used in the making of this brush. Camel hair means that just a blend of different hairs that are used for brushes. It's like a mishmash is used in this and they call it camel. And I have no idea why that is. I'm actually going to run down a friend of mine who makes brushes because I need the backstory on this. I've been looking it up, but apparently you've got to be journeying into brushes to ever find out. Hmm. I'm taking a little bit of my white paint and I'm getting it into the sky blue. I don't want this to be a perfect white. Ooh, the clouds. I just want it to be the beginnings of it. And I'm going to do some low clouds. Little circles, little half circles coming up here. These are these are very airy. On the underneath, you could get a little more of the ultramarine blue in there. So you know how I feel about the moon. Yeah, that's how boat fe people feel about. I don't boat feel people. like that's true. I what don't. I've see? never seen that on the channel, but I guess we're about to find out because well, no, you no. started it. I started the boat conversation. I'm taking a little bit of dark blue, and I'm wanting to blend those into the bottom of the clouds down here. Just kind of to shade them a bit, so even though they're like down low and stuff, that 
There's a there's a little of a shadow. You've shaded the bottom of that cloud. Yeah, because they block light. They have form. Clouds have form. And that that mixture of the dark and the light, the the blue and the white paint, that makes that cloud appear. That makes that little cloud appear, right? You can always come in and get like a number four round if you want to be really like cloud specific. Cloud specific. Instead of generally clouds. And you can even kind of come in and you know, just make sure that your clouds have wonderful little shapes. If you don't have the round blender, don't let that stop you. I'm just doing it just as like just the same with my little four. It takes a little longer to do it with a little round brush like this. Sometimes that's good, though. If you're really struggling with your cloud shapes, sometimes uh, getting a brush that you have a little more control over that you can be, be kind of fussy with, not like for six hours on just these clouds fussy, but like just <laughs> thoughtful with, you know, can be a good thing. I can come in and one of the things we, we forget is that sometimes there are little clouds that are kind of like little shadows mm -hmm. that happen. You can always come back with a little bit of white in your blue. So it was the ultramarine. And kind of haze up the horizon. Yeah. So that the bottom of your clouds are noticeably different. These are little, little clouds, right? They're just little distant fluffs. I think I moved that cloud below my horizon line. It does not live in the water. <laughs> you don't go there. That's a it's an important thing. Clouds the wrong have cloud. To... Now I want to make some up high fluffy clouds. These are like these upper stratosphere kind of clouds. And Thick, what's uh, great is someone always tells me what kind they are because I never remember during the video. Mm-hmm. Never. It's okay. That's what the internet's for. And the internet says, sure, I got you. Bring here and kind of bring some of them just around different directions because they really blow all kinds of different ways. You know, I do a lot of the little upward arcs, the horsetail styles. These really do a lot of different things. And now you see why I can do the white sails on the boats and it's not even a problem. Mm -hmm. I can just keep building up the white. Wow, that really makes it. The sky come together up there. Yeah, it just has a it has some energy, right? As if there's wind. You know, a reason to have gone sailing in the first <laughs> place. You know, maybe you felt a breeze and you said to yourself, it's time to get up. You have to be gentle with your, your clouds on a sailing sky. You know, you've got to have at least a light enough hand that you're not mushing the paint and you're not trying to make little cotton balls. You're trying to create little atmospheric playful puffy puffs yeah well, i can always go in if i need to add more water to improve flow i can do that i'm leaving lots of space between clouds you can also blend with a finger and so you can build up That's maybe a little bit more built up than I would want to so come back with a little blue. I'm like, that's just a little bright because they'll be bright up top, but they won't always be that bright. It's a fun sky that you can play with. I'm 
always surprised with the way that those upper, you know, just sort of wispy clouds bring together the sky. I think what it is is that we see them and we're familiar with them. And so when we see them in a painting, it helps ground that painting into what it is. I'm going to add some just little functional stratus bits. And I will move my canvas a little bit to my left just to help me have a nice angle when I'm trying to straighten out. Mm -hmm. You just build up your clouds. I'm going to add a little more white down here. Now, these will have the brightest of the white down here because they're more, they're a distant cumulus style. Distant. Distant. That doesn't mean that you can't give them a nice little, a little highlight out there. Mm -hmm. We take our clouds so seriously. We really do. I think, I think that's a boat person thing. <laughs> For sure. Like, I don't know why you do it. Any boat people. Well, we're talking about boats today. You think, do you think the boat people are taking the clouds too seriously? I'm on a boat. Well, I mean, I think they should because they're sailing, right? Like that's a adding a little shadow to the back of my clouds here. Out with the mermaids. Sometimes in that'll the happen splash. when they get a little shadow at the back. You know why I'm on the boat? Because mm. there's sharks in the water and I'm not going in there. <laughs> you would not like a catamaran. <laughs> no. It's There's like nothing about a catamaran that makes you think, you know, we could survive a great white shark attack. <laughs> it's like got this, it's got a chum net in the middle. <laughs> it's just sort of like, we're going to dip people in the water and attract the sharks. <laughs> <It> really <true. laughs> I'm just creating little elements of, you know, more thoughtful. These little these little moments in the sky, they're like wonderful, aren't they? I love them very much. And back and forth. I'm just wiggling my brush. I engage and I release my brush. And it's important just to make irregular shapes. You know. There we go. I feel like that's a very sailing day sky. Yeah. There's a lot of wonderful stuff happening. It's obviously a very clear day. We still can see our sail and where everything goes. So I think we should call that a step and come back in and start painting in elements of our ocean. Well, it's time to get splashy and get into the water. We're going to do a couple of things that might make you anxious at first, but there actually is a reason for it. We're going to paint through our boat and sails here to get a nice, smooth contingency of water, and we'll put them back in at the end. We'll dry everything and put them back in at the end. So you won't lose them so much that you can't get them back. It's just so that we can get a nice, long brush stroke. I'm also going to take my T-square uh, ruler and make sure that I reaffirm my... Sky watermark because we got to keep those horizons level. If we want something to look and feel like water, level is generally a great way of doing it. I think I'm going to use a half inch angle brush. You could also use a braid, but I just like the sharpness of this brush, especially for water. Mm. I'm going to come back to my ultramarine blue and my phthalo blue. I am going to turn my canvas, and the reason that I'm turning it is that I have a straighter, more controlled stroke at this angle, and so it's my preference to pull the stroke into me, and that helps me keep it uh, straighter than I might normally just on my own. That's Now, if you were not as confident, could you use tape? 
You could use tape. You could use artist tape. And we've got some examples in the series of artist tape being used. This distant water is a bit darker. Leans a little more to the ultramarine, I feel. Now, we know where our boat is still going to be, and we have enough information where we can put it back. But this just really helps us kind of paint straight lines. And with the water, you do want it to feel like, oh, well, it's, you know, cohesive. Coming forward, the water is going to go a little more turquoise or green. So I'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue over to my phthalo green, and I'm going to mix a greener water. And then it's noticeably greener. Oh, yeah. Starting to add some ocean. I won't take out my holes entirely, but I definitely, definitely want to know that they're there. This little bit behind the holes and everything, you really have got to see it and feel it. I can blend here on the edge and make sure that this is a good transition between the, the dark blue and the green blue. as water is. It is a pretty defined line, but you do want it to um, have some blending. Adding more white as I come forward, lightening the water up. Uh -huh. And then there's going to be a really interesting bit where it starts to be transparent over the sand. And then also we have to balance out the reflection areas in the water where the boat is going to be reflecting in the water. So lots to do here. Right now we're just trying to get this general bit in. Now here, the water and the beach kind of meet up. So I'm going to rinse out. And I think for the beach, I'm going to take just a little bit of my black, my burnt sienna and a little of my pad yellow. And I'm gonna find a sand color. I'm gonna brush back. Starting up here at the corner into sort of an angle uh -huh. because I'm gonna have a wave coming down here. And I'm going to bring up some of my turquoise right here and kind of blend these two together. Oh, that's really blendy. Getting a blendy, blendy, blendy. The beginnings of the beach. It's the beginning of the beach. Not all of the beach. The beginning of the beach. And we'll use like a rough brush and stuff to help us get some of that going on. Now, that is that work. Now, I want to dry this. We're not going to put the boat back in yet because we still have some waves and water effect that we want to do. But we are soon enough. And again, if you have this and this. You have enough information to get your holes back in and all of that stuff back in pretty easily. So try not to panic when you paint out something that you put on with a traceable or you blocked out because you can always get it back in with acrylic. Our ability to come back and kind of bounce back into spaces is infinite. So one of the best things about the medium is realizing, oh, I've got a minute to do this. It's going to be okay. We'll come back and we're going to paint some more water and beach. Let's start blocking in some of our ocean structure, the way our water is doing little microwaves and, and things like that. They're actually quite a lot of fun to do and 
I really enjoyed this part of painting water. I'm going to take my phthalo blue and a good bit of my phthalo green. And interestingly enough, some of my cad yellow, it's going to get it back into the green. And we're going to come here and we're going to kind of do a little scoop. See that little scoop there? Yeah. Just a little bit of a scoop. I could actually have it even be more in the yellow, interestingly enough. And as I go forward, I can even kind of get into uh, some of my sand color. And I'll pull it this way. Mm -hmm. Out in the deeper water, I'm going to add a little more blue. It'll be a little more uh, aquatic. I might peak this one up kind of high. And then bring it down. Yeah. So that'll be like a little bit of a wave that up and then comes down just a smidge. Now out in the far water, I'm going to add a little bit of my ultramarine and my blue. We want a deeper, deeper color. And we're going to say out here. Some little distant bits. Ooh. Distant Watery distant bits. bits. I love the distant bits. It's fun. It's fun stuff, the distant bits. So I like to get those in. We're going to put in a little more of our beach. I'm going to get my brown and my black and some of my white. Make some sort of rough little marks. And I may want to, you know, kind of sometimes go into my hog if I'm not getting a nice rough mark. Mm -hmm. I just want to show that this is, you know, nice dark beach kind of space. I'll add a little black and pull it out. And that's because I want the sand to have some discoloration. It's not all perfectly one. I might even get into some of my um, sky color, believe it or not. Oh, okay. And put it in there because that kind of implies that maybe some of that is wet. Powerful move if you need to do it. I'm going to rinse out. Now I'm going to come back into my water and do some interesting little mark things. And I'm trying to decide what brush I really want to enjoy because I can get into a small brush and get very kind of ingrained in it. Or I can work pretty big and scruffy and maybe get a lot done with a similar effect. So I'm going to take my number six round hog bristle, bristle brush and we're going to mix some highlight colors and some watercolors out here in the water. So I'm going to take my white and the wave turquoise that I made earlier. I'm going to make some very light colors. Too light. That's a little too white. We still want it to be turquoise. Get into that there. And again, it's it's very light. Yeah. But it's still turquoise. So that's that is the juggles trying to get a nice light reflection in. I may need to turn this to the side. I am brushing back and forth. I'm keeping my brush stroke sort of level. I can grab a little of my ultramarine blue and my phthalo green. They make kind of an interesting teal color. We can add some little shadows in the water. All right. Yeah. Sometimes you need a little shadow in the water. So 
Now coming forward, I'm going to get more into this green. We'll maybe even get a little brown into it. Remember our kind of beach color? Mm -hmm. Add white. We're going to come up here. We're going to make a little kind of rise over. This is where that wave has started to curl, where it's sort of up here. It's going to curl over here. Yeah. Maybe bringing some just reflection water out here behind this wave. And you need to save your white because you've got to really work it with the top of the wave. That'll be a very important thing to do. Uh -huh. Now I'm going to grab a little of my green and phthalo blue. Just working these colors. I find up front on the water, I'm going to want to have a more green personality to it. I like that beach coming together. The beach really comes together pretty quickly. There'll be a few things that make it really sing. Yeah. Um, the shadow in water, where we can get shadow in the water, because the water will have shadow. And then also the reflection from the boat, because water is a mirror. Mm -hmm. So if we can if we can constantly tell that story, I'm going to get into my ultramarine blue and a lot of my white. And I'm going to sort of dry brush some distant reflections on the dark ocean. I kind of used, if you saw me there, and kind of splay out my little brush a bit. Yeah. Now, if you don't have a fan, you can do that. I don't want to take the dark blue away. I just want to make sure that what's going on out in the far water has also dimensionality. Yeah. All right. That is kind of a good place to get. You've made some shadows in the water. You started to talk about it. We've started to build in some structure of the waves. Now we're going to come in and really think about what's happening on our beach and everything there. I'm going to be working with my number four round, which gives me a nice sharp point. And I'm going to take a little of my brown and my black again this is going to be kind of my shaded ocean floor and I'm going to come in and give myself a wave roll coming in where the foam is going to be the number one thing that you might have trouble with if you haven't done this before in painting uh, foam is recognizing that there's these shadows that you've got to come in and represent mm -hmm. if you want it to look like there's foam because it actually does cast a shadow on the shore. Which is sort of unusual to get used to, but it for sure does. Yeah. Um, here I'm going to come into this reflection here and I'm going to get some brighter, bright as I can really get. Try to really sing to what's happening here. Where the wave is arcing over. Uh huh. Get into my green. Really showing that little shading there. Now 
And along the top of different parts of the wave, I'm going to grab a little of my white and yellow and stuff here, and I'm going to just sea foam a bit. It's not pure white. Mm -hmm. That bit of the wave. These are little waves. These are the ripples coming up on the shore. I'm going to grab a little of my brown and green. And just kind of smidge along here. Yeah. I'm going to zoom in on that so we can see. Just a little bit. And it's just in that spot there where it's rushing up to the shore. My yellow and brown again and sand color needs to come back in. And I'm going to turn this a little bit to the side just so that I have a good angle on it. All right. I'm going to bring this right up where the wave is. Where the water is thickest, it's darkest. And where it's thinnest, it starts to have the light kind of come out from it. And it can be really hard to recognize that that is going on until you see it. Now, when you see it, you can never unsee it. Yep. And bring the sand color forward. Now we got the little bit of sand color coming up, and there's this wave going on. Now let's take our yellow and green, get a very, 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 very light color. And at the top of some of this, we're going to paint in just a kiss of that little light color. All right. It would be nice to also put it a little over the roll of that wave. So we're just trying to shade our wave a little bit. Come back with some more white. And I like to use the white in my ultramarine blue because seafoam has a bit of a shadow to it as well. Yeah. You want to kind of catch that so you can add um, highlights where you need them. Coming in with just a little bit of that white highlight. Now, I'm going to bring the sea foam around. It comes up my wave. Uh huh. And it goes down over the shore. I'm doing this all with my number four round. I am going to turn this to the side. And that's just so I have an easier time making these little horizontal and meandering little openings where the sea foam opens up and shows what's underneath it. That makes sense. Just breathe and enjoy. It's like a little puzzle. It can be easy to get super wrapped up in it. Yeah. You've got to find a way to sort of like just enjoy your foam. Just enjoy the foam. This is a little bit of ultramarine and white. So it's not perfectly white. That gives us a little bit of highlighting options. I'm coming up to the edge here, and you can see that I'm leaving that little shadow. Mm -hmm. You need the shadow. I 
I like the waves on the beach that you're putting in there. They're little wavelets. Well, you wouldn't go out on a big surf day, right? <laughs> this is the level of surf well, you would well, want for your boat. I, again, boat people. I don't know. I'm telling you what, man. My dad flipped it. My dad pwned the catamaran into the ocean, bottom of the ocean floor. See, I be- it's not I a like- good surfing tool. He did not do that right. I like mini boats, little ones that like you can get into boats. in fresh water, like, you know, big enough for one person to go around <laughs> and has like an eight horsepower motor and just <laughs> makes, barely makes weight. You know what I'm talking about. I know what you're talking about. I do. I'm going to get a little bit of my, my sea color, which is my uh, phthalo and my um, phthalo green and phthalo blue. Mm-hmm. We're going to add some reflections now that we have a little bit to this wave where the sun has caught it. Because this is further out, right? Yeah. This wave. Is a little further out and I'll bring a little reflection to the back side of it. Maybe a little white for the top. It's just mm-hmm. a little bit crusty, but it's not sea foam yet. You mm-hmm. just got the highlights of the waves that you can see moving. Yeah, just a little, little bit. And this back here, too, same thing, same thing. Just a little bit. You can always get your phthalo blue and your phthalo green together to make your, like, darker kind of watercolor. Mm-hmm. You have some little chop going through here. Now, finally, I want to come back with a little bit of extra, extra white. And add some highlights to some of the foam. Not all the foam, just some of the foam. Along that little shoreline. Mm-hmm. Now you've got some see-through foam. You can see the beach underneath. A little off blue, and you can come up here and be like, maybe a little bit of this wave was here a second ago. Uh-huh. That leaves a little, a little kiss of itself, doesn't it? Not a lot, just a little bit. Look at that. Wow. It's fun, right? It really is amazing. It's super fun. Like, it, it's just so fun. You know, I'm really excited about it, but. And go, and it's got its little roll. Yeah. All right. When we come back, we'll start putting in our boat. So you've got a lot of this little great scenery around your boat happening. You're probably feeling kind of good about your ocean scene. And you're like, oh, I got to put my boat in, but I painted some of it out. What am I going to do? Well, you can take your ruler back, if you remember. And go ahead and put back some of those little elements of the boat that you had already thought out and use mm-hmm. your chalk to do it. You don't have to, like, freehand it all in with paint. If you're at all worried, it's pretty easy to put back in. Oh, 
I always think a lot about that trapeze bit. So once I kind of know where objects are, and I definitely know that I want, there's got to be enough, so you've got to have enough clearance in the sail <laughs> for it mm-hmm. not to take out whoever's sailing the cat. You need just enough clearance right, for that. So once I have that sort of sketched in where I know I want it to be, I'm going to begin with my blue. Now my blue, I'm going to take a little bit of my thalo and my ultramarine together. They're going to make quite a dark blue, actually. Ooh. I'm a pain in the front of the catamaran. And it has a name, but... The bow? Yep, huh? that name. Some sort of name. Actually, I think it's like something specific because of the whole... The, the, two hall thingies mm. but now this is one where i think catamaran people will probably share what they what that is because they will want that to be accurate in the painting and they will want everyone to know because of their love of sailing Now, if I get a little enthusiastic and overpaint the hull, I can always come back with my brush and a little bit of water and see kind of image it back. Mm-hmm. And I can also come back with water this way. You do want a pretty decent line of the catamaran into the water. That's not something it's that's not really negotiable. Sometimes you can see the water between these two hulls, but in general. From this vantage, we would not. Mm -hmm. Underneath the catamaran, we're going to take some green and uh, maybe some phthalo to make some darker kind of watercolor. And you're going to add a shadow to the water. I'm using my number four round and I'm going to just this make is, sure that there's a beautiful shadow under my boat. This is tricky. It's tricky to sail around, to sail around. It's right on time. It's tricky. Well, I mean, you're making like a ref, you're a shadow on the water. Now it does shape. It does have a shadow. That's I want to make cool. sure I'm using short little strokes and then I break up the line because the ripples of the water do tend to break up the shadow. So for it to feel correct, you'll definitely need to have that. And bring it out here. Interestingly enough, I'll wiggle it back and forth. Because there's a bit of a, a, a wave. There's a bit of a ripple. So interesting. So just the start of it. We're just starting to say, hey, a thing happened. On the toe of my brush. A little short stroke. The length of the strokes kind of speak to the, the surface of the water. When I have that in. I can come in with a little black and white and maybe even ultramarine because it makes such a nice sort of metal, gunmetal kind of uh, gray color. Yeah. And as straight as I can. Make that flagpole. I'm going to want to bring a line down. Not a flagpole. That's a... Sail pole a or mast. mast. There we go. There's a word. It's that thing. Ah, I got off my on. straight line. You could tape this too or use a ruler. You just want to make sure that it's uh, slender enough 
to be believable. A lot we can uh, we can make up for in the sale coming in. We just want to have that mm-hmm. kind of visibly there like that. And what's really fun is this is multicolored, so that's going to give us some forgiveness there. I'm also going to come down here and sort of take a little bit of blue above. And this will represent the trapeze that's happening. And I'll need to, I want to peek a little water underneath it. Sometimes that's easier to come paint back in. Yeah. So you're just trying to talk about little elements of that. Right. Now, hmm, I'm trying to decide if I want to use a bright or an angle brush because there are pretty crisp lines that we have. Yeah. I'm going to see how it goes with my round. I am going to change my water so it's clean. And I'm going to paint in the first run of stripes. So I'm going to take my green and my yellow. Mm -hmm. My green and my yellow. And I'm going to come to the top here. And the first segment of my sail is green. And interestingly enough, the last segment of my sail Mm -hmm. will be green. There is no space between this mast pole and the sail. That's kind of nice. There are little openings for air. You can decide if you want to put those in. I'm more probably going to put the little um, pins off the edge of the sail over, you know, more than anything. Mm -hmm. Now, also here, the base of this will be green. I'm going to rinse out well. And I'm going to come back and on highlights and low lights and all kinds of things. I just want to get the stripes in first. So I'm going to grab a little bit of my cad red. Mm-hmm. And I may tone it just a smidge, just, just a tiny, tiny bit with my phthalo blue. I will put some bright, bright red on it. I just... uh Start with this, and then I use the bright red highlights to create kind of like the shading and making it feel bright red. Now, I may need to turn this to the side just so that I can get nice stripes. Yeah, I need another stripe right here. Yeah, those stripes all mean things, I think. Do they? I mean, we had a rainbow sail because my mom wanted one, but I couldn't tell you what it meant. Well, also had a that rainbow was probably windmill. just a, like a rainbow sail, but I mean, I think in racing, like, that means things. This could be a rainbow. This could be a racing boat. That's possible. Could be. But right now in the painting of this sail, I would just make sure that if I'm using this red down here, I use that red throughout. Is it takes a couple coats of this. I'm going to make an orange, which is my cad red and my cad yellow. Got a little green in my paint, and so that's going to make it a little bit duller, and I don't want that. So you got to avoid your greens. If there's more red in the paint, it will be a darker orange. And if there's more yellow, it will be a brighter, lighter orange. Ah. You could do wholly different colors on the sail. That would be okay. And once I get this in, I can come in with a bright brush or an angle or another Uh brush and do anything I want. But it's just important to get this base in. And and I want to have some control over what's happening. 
I don't want to be messy with it yet. You could kind of paint any sail you wanted to in here. Any sail you wanted. You could put Pooh Bear on the sail. I guess that's true. Yeah, there's no rules really here. I mean, there probably is for sailing, but for the purposes of our painting, there are not rules. Mm. Now I'm going to make a very bright orange. This is not my pure yellow yet, but it's going to be my orange and some of my yellow. Uh-huh. Segmenting that out. And you can see why I thought it'd be a good idea to like maybe paint it a little bit first. Yeah. With some white because yellows are a pretty transparent color. As are oranges, so. Now I'm going to come in, I'm going to take a little of my yellow to the side. I'm going to grab uh, some white in it and paint in the middle. That stripe there. So this is, this is not really tidy at this stage. This is just, this is like blocking in, uh -huh. but like really fussy blocking in. At the top of this, I'm going to add, I think, another green stripe just for balance. Mm -hmm. All right, so just go back to my green just real quick and add a little green top to it. I haven't painted in any rigging or highlights or anything. I've just kind of thought about it. And now all these colors end up getting to be in the water. So that's going to be really fun in a minute. But first we have to finish the boat. Let's call this a step because that was a lot to get there. And then we'll put the highlights and the finishing work on this that make this look like a really finished piece. So I'm going to get back into my half inch angle because I want some sharp edges and I want some control and I need to put different little highlights and everything around. And one of the first things that I'm going to do is I'm going to take my black, a little bit of my ultramarine together and my white and start working that gray again. Mm -hmm. I'm going to make, I've got a couple la layers of it. So, you know, I've got some choices as I'm painting. I'm going to come to the top of this, right about here. I'm going to add a little bit of a firm line. As I come down, I want it to be a little more in shadow. Mm-hmm. And then I can pop a little of a highlight in there as I need. I'll switch to my round for a second just so that I can play with this. And up here up top, I will add a highlight to the ball and then I'll have like a little gray shadow. And I may even come along here and kind of imply a dark shadow where the mass meets the sail. Mm. Just a little bit there. A few highlights where you know you'd want them. And I can even come back with my round and a little white even. Now, now just play with that. Don't you want to have it? Just don't be too fussy about it. You just want to be able to see it All right. on the boat itself. Mm -hmm. I'm going to take a little of my phthalo blue and my titanium white. I'm 
I'm going to make a highlight blue for the pontoons. Pontoon. Yeah. Make a little edge coming down here. Kind of pull a little edge down. Same over here. Rinse out. And now I'm going to make sure, maybe I'll use just my phthalo and a little mix of my ultramarine. And we're going to come up on the water. And I think this is actually going to need kind of a shadow. Yeah. Even more than what this is doing. So I may grab some of my black to deepen the blue. Come along the toe of this, just get a nice sharp edge. And then over here, mm -hmm. we'll definitely want to have a shadow kind of cast. The blue shadow. So that they read sort of as two different pontoons. Get that distinct shadow. A little blue up top where the trapeze is. Because they would often have like a super blue trapeze. Mm -hmm. Just a match up. Be all matchy matchy. Take my number four round. Pop a nice highlight where it's needed. Top of the pontoons and maybe a little bit on the trapeze. Yep. Is that what the thing's called? The trapeze? Mm-hmm. Not the human chum net? Might be the trampoline, but I feel like it was a trapeze. If, I, if it was trampoline and I've been saying trapeze this whole time and all the boat people are like, stop, sorry. Let's see, there you go. Boat people. Boat oh, people are awesome. <laughs> Why st Don't start with the internet, man. I answer questions. That doesn't answer questions. So let me give you his direct email. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. We've got a little bit of that happen in there. That's always fun for me. Yeah. And then, you know, you can get out there and, and make sure that there's a very noticeable, like, opening. Mm -hmm. You can see the water on the other side. There you go. On the sail. Looking good. I'm going to take a little bit of, again, that blue into the cad red. I used ultramarine that time. It really doesn't, not really that important. You just want the shaded. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come here and get kind of a nice shaded. Those, the sail is pretty cool. The sail is pretty cool. I'm like very, from the outside in with bright red. Very vintagey looking sail. I guess it's a color scheme. It's the color scheme, right? Yeah. It's a super vintage looking sail, and I think it is the color scheme. Isn't that kind of nice now? Yeah. I'm 
and take a little of my yellow and my green together. Uh huh. Back up a little bit. A little shading right there. That's nice. A little bit darker as it's, you know, kind of closer to the mast. Kind of implying some billowingness to the sail. A little bit of implication of that. A little bit. We're not really going anywhere yet, so... The billow doesn't have a chance to get going. Yeah. Yet. Yet. Could could start billowing at any minute, but it hasn't billowed yet. Rinse out very thoroughly because green really grays out orange. So if you're trying to get a bright orange, you really don't want a lot of green in it. I definitely want those to be orange. Mm -hmm. How I like that is that brightens up. I do too. Let me get a brighter, bright orange. And again, you could do this with a bright or any square brush, just anything that gave you a lot of control. You would just want something that you would feel like, you know, you had control over the edges on. You get sharp little edges in your painting. And a little yellow. And the yellow and white lets you do that brighter yellow center. Okay. Now you can get that like lemon yellow mm -hmm. in the center of your sail. Okay. That looks pretty good. Pretty okay. We're going to get into our um, round again. And we're going to go into our black and blue. In between each element here. Very fine, dark line. Oh, yeah. I like that. Add some character to the sail. Oh, there is a little bit of a shadow because there's these little rods that come out. Hmm. Not as prominent on this sail. Pretty okay, pretty good. Put out some fluid paint. It's a calm little boat. Just this sitting is there. Titanium white fluid acrylic. It calm a little boat. Well, nothing is happening with the boat right now, so it's it's real easy for it to be calm. I'm going to add a little reflection to the top of that hole. And then to the top of these little poles mm. and little marks. We want a little reflection coming out. Just little marks.
And this will make kind of like these little edges, these like little uh, zones on the sail. There we go. Mm. Light on the front edge. Uh huh. Some dark line on that back edge. You can imply some of the rigging there that might mm -hmm. be coming off. Make sure that those like kind of show. So when you have that, you know, I can kind of come through and I can be like, you know, a little red and yellow and mm -hmm. talk about some billowing. A little billowing here. And then I can come in and I can. Add some highlights. So I'm just kind of working a slightly lighter value than what is in that little space. Oh, those little brush strokes there make a lot of difference. They add a lot of character to the sails. Yeah, and it's nice to add a little character to the sail. A little highlight as if things have like like there's ripples in the fabric, right? And grab a little bit of the yellow and white. Mm -hmm. Same sort of thing. And same with the green. There you go. A little bit of that going on on this really can make a huge amount of difference for how, you know, it looks to your eye. And then all kinds of personality to your cell. can also come back in with a little cad red, right? Really pop the red zones a bit. Mm -hmm. Give it a lot. All right. That's a step, man. You did a lot there. That wow. was a lot. Painting that boat was a lot, and you did a lot. There was a lot to think about. Stripe sails. <laughs> Those sails turned out awesome. They There's went from, they went from, you know, kind of meh sails to wow. Those are sails. Well, there's something anyways. <laughs> I think we got a lot we do here. We're going to come back and add some reflections and some finishing zhuzh. All right. All right. So we're going to add some little bits of color to the water and around. Give this painting like that next little extra kind of cool thing. If you'll remember, we were doing some dark reflections in the water. Mm-hmm. And now that we've got our boat kind of in, we can kind of like think a little bit about how that was going. Getting some of those little extra shadows because the boat, you know, it has weight. It does stuff. It carries carries passengers and it blocks light. <laughs> However, it also reflects, which means our water needs to have some of these great colors that we mix. Also reflecting. Mm -hmm. And we need those all around. I'm just on my number four and I'm kind of bringing them around. Again, if you'll remember, the length of the stroke is sort of 
you know, about what it is, the, the ripple in the water. And come in and get into my yellow and oh wow those reflections really are popping it together don't they yeah make a nice little just like what so pretty and that's why it's fun to paint boats mm. <laughs> especially colorful boats because they impact everything around them You can get a little bit of that, and then you can come back in and get some of those water reflections that you know we like. Yeah. You know, now that you kind of sort of know where those reflections are, you can add these to this water coming towards the shore. Mild boat envy. Are you having boat envy? Yeah. I think we could rent one. Just of these a little on. boat envy, though. I think we're just all like inside for so long. We're like, I'll go on a boat. I don't want a big even, boat. I want a little John's boat. John's like, uh, maybe I'll go on a boat. John's still pretty afraid of sharks. I'm going to grab it's some white on water. my brush. And... See, I, I want a mini boat that goes on water. It has to be able to be go behind the Suzuki, so it has to be very small. We're adding some little highlights to some of these reflections, kind of coming in the center. Right. Another thing we can do is, you know, there's all kinds of ropes and things that happen. Uh huh. You can add a few little rope bits. Oh, there's a little rope on the boat. A little rope. I mean, somehow the boat isn't going anywhere. I'm not really sure how that is working, but it's not. Uh, the boat has a rudder. It's the thing that steers the boat. It steers the boat. Or the boat steers the rudder. No, the the rudder definitely steers the boat. <laughs> I hope, I would hope that the boat that does. And next thing I can do is I can grab some of the white, just on my brush, and I can come in and kind mm -hmm. of highlight the edge of some of these sails. Yep. Kind of make them feel like oh, they like a little light has caught them. No, which is kind of nice. And you can capture a little bit of light along the top of the hulls. Mm -hmm. Maybe they're a little wet. A little bit of wet there. Maybe a little bit along the top of the rudder. Little highlights, just little elements that give it some structure. You can also add a few little detailing mm -hmm. elements like here in the, the, the foam. Some of these little bits on the beach. Just a little bit foamier. highlights on the clouds too yeah just you've got the last little minute you're spending with your painting you can just look for things that could use some extra love just brings it all up brings it all together distant water going on mm -hmm.
Okay. And that is the catamaran. Wow. I think we did a good job. Yeah, You could sign it where the letters go on the boat. Where do the letters go on the boat? I, on, I thought you would know that. Well, they're the front or the back. You're on the side of the I'm going to probably sign it over here, but but I'm not really sure. You could sign it where the letters go on the boat if you knew where that was. If you knew where that was, you could do that. You could absolutely do that. I don't know where that is. I'm going to grab my number one monogram <laughs> liner. <laughs> we don't know enough about boats. I know on like little like uh, little motorboats, like you have for fun, you put them on the front of the boat. But, you know. There probably is a place to do that. I just don't know where that is, so I'm going to sign it out here in the Let's sand. See. Seems reasonable. If you felt really arty, you could make it look like someone wrote your signature with their finger. Oh, now I get, I can't wait to see all the different sales people do. I think they will be creative with sales. I think you guys can be creative sales and make them your own color. It's really the process, right, of the sale. So you don't have to worry too much about having exactly our sale. Mm -hmm. You could have your own sale and your favorite colors. Blue would be a tough sale. <laughs> White would be pretty easy, but blue might be a little bit tough. Yep. Um, Hello Kitty would stand out for sure. Oh, yeah. SpongeBob. Bright colors. <laughs> sale. Ah, so we're getting back into the groove of things. We have a really gorgeous wave tomorrow. Um, it's actually probably going to be a pretty relaxing day on the yeah. wave because that's all just about the directionality of breaststroke. So it'll be like a shorter day. You'll feel okay about spending your time on this and getting it to where you know. And now you understand a little bit about water and reflection in the shore, which is pretty exciting. We're going to talk about it more as we go. Be good to yourselves. Be good to each other. And I'd like to see you at an easel really soon. Bye-bye.